And we are now joined by our guest. This woman has been in some amazing fights. She is definitely a part of the Mexican fighting legacy with some spectacular performances, a formidable flyweight, a great guest, and we're happy to have her. Let's welcome our guest, Sula Morbida. Hi, everyone. Thank you, ladies, for having me. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thank we're, you. We're excited to have you. Right? Mm-hmm. Very <laughs> exciting. Uh, well, no, it's funny. During the break, we mentioned a name, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, why did you mention that name? I, I mean, you were you shared the ring with her, and we've talked about the fight. And uh, we we just interviewed her about her fight against uh, Fujioka that you, you, you were not victorious against, but you had one hell of a fight against her. But let me ask you this, Sulem, before we get into anything. Why is Marlene so misunderstood? Yes, tell us. I don't know if she's misunderstood or... If she or not liked. Sticks, or she just sticks her foot in her mouth. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I can't be the only one, you know? Uh-huh. Everyone knows I'm not the only one. So. <laughs> Out of all of you guys, she just seems to be the most polarizing. Everyone kind of has... You're all competitors, but you all have a sense of camaraderie or at least a level of respect for each other where, oh, you know, that person's tough, et cetera. But you guys are united in campaign no Marlin, hashtag no Marlin. My gosh, there's several <laughs> of you who feel that way. And what is what is the or, the evil origin story of it? First of all, it's not like it's this whole thing against Marlin because it's not a big deal. She's not a big deal. It doesn't matter to us. It's just... You know, we don't associate ourselves with her. It's it's, it's that simple. Um, I don't want anything to do with her. Uh, recently, she she brought out an interview where she wanted to talk to me about certain things. And I have nothing to talk with her about because, I mean. Wait, what do you mean? Talk to you about certain things. What's the tea? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't read that. <laughs> so so uh, during obviously there was some a lot of tension before my fight things that she acted like she didn't know anything about, but that's just what she does. And then uh, after we fought and then they announced the fight with her and, and Fujioka, uh, she did an, an interview with New York Fight News. And um, she said that she actually wanted to talk to me because things were misunderstood and and we were friends once. And uh, she wanted to actually talk to me about being a sparring partner. I mean, I'm no one's sparring partner. Yeah. <laughs> so... So I, it just, I, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, I, I, I'm on my own way and um, I'm feeling better and I'm feeling good about myself and I, I don't need all that baggage that Marlene carries. Wow. I didn't even know it was like that. Okay. I want to know. <laughs> I, okay. So then we'll shift to it then. Uh, we'll switch it back to the in-ring thing and fighting her and fighting against Nyoka Fujioka. Mm-hmm very different styles, very different types of opponents. What did you, after facing both of them and having knowledge of them, what did you think of their fight? When I fought uh, Fujioka, I felt I did very well. Um, I made her miss a lot of punches. I countered her. I boxed her very beautifully. I changed a lot of things during camp and, and, and you saw them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, there was, I feel like after the sixth round, my corner started to tell me to, you know, stop boxing her so much and, and, and back her up. And I had a conflict with my corner of wanting to listen to them and knowing and feeling that I was doing so well boxing that I shouldn't. So I was stuck in between the two styles of wanting to obey my corner and doing what I felt was right. Mm. And in the end, it hurt me because I should have closed better on that fight. Um, then uh, with Marlene, you know, she just... She knows she knows I'm a strong fighter and um, she just she she picked her game plan. It was to hit and move. And, and that's what she did. And I was a little too hot headed in the, in the ring. And um, she she was a better boxer that night. Um, obviously, Marlene doesn't have power. She's she's fast and, and she's smart, but she has zero power. So she knows that she can't sit there and, and trade with you. Um, watching the fight, I was actually there live. Uh with Fujioka and Marlene and I thought the judging was just horrible. Um, you can't, it was a very close fight, very close fight. It was so close. And there was times where Marlene wasn't even throwing and, and getting hit and getting caught. And I mean, they gave her every single round. 
Uh, you can't score a fight like that when two champions are, are, especially when two champions are facing each other. You know, I did bring that up with Marlon because I remember during the timeline, a lot of people had it close. I had it very close. I, I mean, Marlon won by maybe one, two rounds at best, but it wasn't a landslide. She did not win by complete domination. And I confronted her. I think it was two cards that had 10, mm -hmm. uh, 1090, mm -hmm. or excuse me, 190. And she said it was only one, but still, even that one card shouldn't have been. And too she, wide. It was way too wide. But um, and, but the right person won. But it just um, she she felt that it was the right the right cards. I mean, of course, what fighter is not going to say that? Mm -hmm. But um, I'm glad that you know you got to see it uh, firsthand. And then also, I think another discrepancy. I mean, Texas already has some suspicious judging. They're very suspect. <laughs> Sus. But. Um, I think when you're from Texas, you shouldn't have a judge from Texas judging your fight. Mm -hmm. Am I right? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not the only one that thinks that. For sure. But um, I want to circle back. You said something that you didn't obey your corner. What's funny is that uh, your husband is your coach. So mm -hmm. what are those conversations like in the ring? And then when your fight is over, when you're when you're at home, when you guys look over the fight and talk about it, knowing that you didn't listen to your corner? You know, it was, um, I, I've had a, a bumpy year. I mean, last couple of fights, my last three fights haven't been great. Um, I lost to Marlene and losing to Marlene, you know, it, the camp for that was, it was very difficult. It was very difficult. I felt like my team and I weren't working well together. It, it can get very, very difficult when, you have somebody that you love and at the same time having authority over you and, and telling you what to do. And at the same time, I felt like my corner was, you know, surpassing boundaries with me because that he knows me so well that he feels he can speak to me however he, he wishes, you know, because he's so close to me as to he wouldn't speak like that to another athlete. Mm. And then I I, I kind of got into my head a lot about that. So the camp for Marlene, I mean, it was so difficult. And I was I was just going through a lot of things in my head. And and I had a lot of trouble with recovering after the weight cut. It was just a lot of things that I learned that I hadn't learned, you know, through victory. Because you win and you're like, okay. Well, I won. That's it, you know? And you lose and, and you sit there and, and you look back. I, like I said, I own up to my loss. I'm not uh, somebody to put excuses. She was the better boxer that night. But it made me realize a lot of things and a lot of things that I had been holding back for so many years. You know, I've been training with my husband for, since 2007. Mm. Are you so, going to change? I mean, have you had that conversation of maybe changing up the corner? Because when you think about it, there's mm -hmm. not many uh, husband, wife, uh, trainers or trainer boxer. Uh, mm -hmm. You always see father, sons. Right. So um, yeah. ha have you had that very tough conversation saying, you know what, maybe you should be, you should step aside because you need someone else in your corner that can speak to you differently. Uh, just have a different dynamic this time. Right. Well, well, actually, uh, we after after the Marlene fight, all that happened, and and we spoke a lot of uh, about a lot of things that had never been spoken before, and um, you know, we were a great team once, and I I feel like we can be a great team again, and it showed in the Naoko fight because I I performed different. You know, I was criticized a lot before because of my defense and. I was just a fighter that would, you know, step in hands up and and in that fight I boxed beautifully. My head movement was on point and it's things that I hadn't done, you know, yeah. that I know how to do but I hadn't done. This is But then it, it it came back to bite me, you know, because I was still angry at him. You know, oh. I was still I still didn't want to listen to him at the end, you know. I I had I felt I had my way and 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 that was it. How do you mediate that type of conversation? Because it's not a like it's more than just a marital thing, a coach thing. It's all interwoven. Do you talk to a therapist? Like, how do you even begin to have those conversations? Because when you're entwined in something, it's difficult to 
even initiate what's working, it's not working. So what was the type of process that you guys used to, well, to start? Well, honestly, honestly, uh, I, I got to a point where we we're training and if something was really, really bothering me, I would just shut up, you know, shut up and go to bed, go to sleep. Oh, I wouldn't so you say went anything. to bed angry. I, okay. Angry. I, I, that happened a lot, a lot for, for a long time, you know? And um, I, I learned now it's taken me these last three fights to realize that, you know, I can't just sit there and I have to talk to him. I have to tell him I, I do love him and he loves me and, and we want the best for each other. And I know that he wouldn't push me this hard if he didn't want what was best for me. Mm. So um, we're just communicating better. And he is more than willing to, you know, have me go up, go up and, and do camp with with somebody else and, and, and learn new things. He's, he's more than willing to do that and to work with somebody else. I think that he's always been there for me. You know, he's gotten me this far, so I can't just, I won't just push him aside. He'll always be there, but he's also willing to work with somebody else, you know, and that's, that's the difference. I think that that shows that he really cares and, and he really wants what's best for me. I think that's the best way for both of you to grow in your relationship mm -hmm. as a husband and wife and as also a, a coach and a student mm -hmm. because um, too much of too much is not good. So it's, it, you know, like you said, it's a learning experience and both mm -hmm. of you have to learn how to let go and just uh, take a leap of faith that all will be well. Do you have a wish list of people that you would like to work with that you've considered who would be um, a good match for your style? I see Manny. Manny Robles for some reason. I don't know why. Manny Robles has a, a great stable right now. He of oh, women, you know, he mm -hmm. has uh Ramla, Ramla Ali. He has Makaya Krebs. Uh he has a uh, amateur girl, um, Perla. Uh, he has he's building a lot of uh female boxers right now. So I mean definitely and we we get along great. Um I would also like to train with uh Virgil Ortiz Sr. Mm, he okay. I, I think his, I, I'm a huge Virgil fan. I love how the little basic things, Virgil just does them right. You look at, at that man's jab and it's like a shotgun going forward. Uh, and yeah. and obviously I need to work on that. So He um, also trained Chrissy Cy Chris Cyborg. Yeah. Yeah. Chris so, Cyborg. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people didn't know that. He, they, he would train him over at uh, Robert Garcia's gym. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, she's not bad either. <laughs> yeah. she, she just brutalized somebody last week. Yeah. Weekend. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's also, um, I'm really good friends with Sinisa. She's, you know, yes. she's been there for me in more ways than I can say. Uh, she's someone that I admire a lot and that, you know, I know has my back 100%. So, um, I I mean, we've talked about me going out there with her and staying with her for a few weeks and, and doing camp out there too. So, I mean, it's it's something that my husband and I have discussed and, and it's it's definitely an option. It's crazy. I never heard this about you, Sulem. I mean, because I've I've interviewed you and I've seen you before. I'm like just out, and I mean, I don't know if you've ever talked about this. That's why. I haven't. I haven't. Not really. Not really. People people don't realize that when you train with your family, it's it can be very very difficult. Yeah. If yeah. if the father son relationship is hard, imagine the husband and wife that go to bed together. You oh, know? that's oh, wow. <laughs> and, and the wife can whip ass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it gets to the point where I'm like, all right, you tell me what to do at the gym, but here at home, it's my turn. <laughs> I, I like heard that. that. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. There's a lot of, probably a lot of people out there who are feeling like maybe they're business partners with their spouse, not mm -hmm. necessarily just boxing. And mm -hmm. it's a beginning of those conversations that, you still want to preserve the relationship, but maybe the business aspect needs to branch out. So kudos. And to you honestly, guys. it just it just goes back to the the simplest thing. Just communicate. You know, mm -hmm. I have to I have to be able to tell him how I feel, um, you know, certain things that are bothering me. And he has to be able to to, you know, explain things to me and ask questions and, and, and just communication makes things so much easier and so much better. Uh -huh. After that, now Oko fight. I was hurting for so long, you know, I don't, I don't say it. I don't post it. I don't know. But people around me know how much that loss hurt because that was for the championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So losing, losing that fight, you know, I've worked since I was a kid and I lose that fight. 
And it was a, it was a very close fight where, you know, some people thought I won. Some people thought it was closed. Whatever it was, it was a great fight. Um, but I felt those scores were just horrible. You have a, a judge giving it a draw, yeah. one giving it 96, 94. And then you have Lou Moret only giving me one round. Yeah, I, so, I, I didn't. I didn't agree. I thought you did really, really well in that fight. Uh, compared to a lot of the other fights, and mm-hmm. I knew you put you, you fought your heart out, and I didn't think she won by mm-hmm. majority majority decision. Right. I thought yeah. more of a split. Right. But, yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, she won, and and I I felt hurt. I felt hurt, and you know, I was I kind of went insane a little bit because I went and I did the same thing. I just went straight into training. I went in straight into training, and I'm mentally not right. I'm mentally not okay. And I fight and I get a draw and I didn't feel it was a draw, but obviously something's wrong and I got to fix it. So I just had to step away from, from boxing altogether for, for a few months. And I feel so much better. It was, it was much needed. I Uh, needed to miss the sport. I remember I saw it on Twitter not that Mm -hmm. long ago that you were in a different place mentally. And I'm, you know, I just, you, you tweet something and you kind of read between the lines and usually Mm -hmm. you're always training, you're always training or you're always Mm -hmm. talking about, I'm hungry, I want to eat or you're doing or salsa dancing. Mm -hmm. But you said something that you needed to, you stepped away and you, it was, it was along the lines of mental health. So I, and I had no Mm -hmm. idea you're going through all of this. So uh, Mm -hmm. we're really, really glad that you were able to find your, find your why and find your happiness again. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I feel like it's like you can breathe again when you, one day I just woke up and I realized, you know, this is all on me. You know, I'm, I'm doing certain things wrong and I need to fix myself. And I need to like I realized the mistakes I was making and, and I cried. I cried. I was like, I can't go on doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just it was it was a, a life changing day for me. Boxing wise, like, I mean, boxing is what I've done since I was a kid. So it's my life and I feel so much better now. So what does this next chapter look like for you? As you now have taken your a break and making mm-hmm. your way back, how are you trying to map out your next steps? Well, obviously um, I've, I've, I've had some bumps in the road and, and sometimes when, when your career doesn't go very well, people turn their backs on you. And uh, sometimes you get pushed aside and that's okay because it gives me a little a little more motivation. And um, I'm going to do this for me now. You know, I, I don't need to do it for anybody else. I've, I've for so many years, I've been doing pushing myself for for other people. And now I need to do this for me. I really, really feel that I need to win. And um, I'm going to get back in the ring. Um, hopefully I'll have some news soon. Um, exactly. I'll. I'll I'll, um, when I'm allowed to speak about it, I will. And um, I'll be back this summer and um, I'm ready to win. That's that's all I want. I just need to get back to winning. You know who you should talk to? You should talk to Nonito Donaire. Oh, yeah. We talked to I him. I love Nonito. Talk to him about finding his why and working. And he said he shared with us a very similar experience about walking and fighting for everyone else, for his father, for everyone. And it was his wife who asked him, well, why do you fight? And he couldn't answer. Yeah. And then once he mm-hmm. found that why, it changed the whole thing and the whole spectrum for him. He's a deep, a deep, deep man. And I feel like you guys could have a great conversation about that. Yeah. He could be very helpful to you. I would love to. I think, um, you know, the way he's revived his career and is he's he's an out, extraordinary human being. And um, not only in the ring, but outside. And, and I would love that. that so if is, you guys can yeah. help me out with that. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. Appreciate and it. that's why, like, if you just watch his interview, like, he'll tell you, he explains it of, um, you know, he didn't want to fight anymore. And he, it, and when he he had to soul search, really soul search of why mm-hmm. he's doing this for him, he was and we all thought he was going to retire mm-hmm. uh, after mm-hmm. Ubali. He figured it out and he was just on this trajectory of becoming a five division world champion, six division. We don't know. And she, he's he'll, he's almost 40. So he's yeah. just like, I'm just getting started again. We're going to so, hook yeah. y'all up. Yeah, yeah. We're going to hook yeah. y'all up. We'll reach out to him. Definitely. We'd love that. 
Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to switch table. Before we see you in the ring, we're going to get to hear you on the mic because I like yes. hearing you on the mic doing commentary. <laughs> but unfortunately, we can't really understand what you're going to be saying because it's going to be in Spanish. Palea. Darn it. <laughs> I mean, good. To, I do my Duolingo, and I, I am practicing Spanish and Russian. And oh, so Russian wow. is very hard because my son is half Russian. <laughs> wow, okay, multilingual. Cool. No, I no. I have a new babysitter, and she's going to be Portuguese. <laughs> I'm like Jesus, <laughs> but um, it's exciting because uh, we obviously know that. Um, I mean, we are a women's boxing show, but we mm-hmm. do talk about women's and men's. But this one is a really big fight, as you all know oh. it. Oh, it's like it's a real. It's not. It's not even a grudge match because it's not like they talk smack or no. they don't say anything bad. They're so respectable. True they're, champions. They're real true champions. They're gonna let their fists do the talking. We're going for. Uh, Katie Taylor and then Amanda Serrano, totally different styles. We can't wait to hear what you have to say before you get on the mic in Espanol. But what, sí. so yeah, see sí. what? Tell us your take on Amanda uh, Taylor versus Serrano. And lo quieren en inglés o lo quieren en español? Uh, in <laughs> in English, por favor. I was like, hold on, let por me get favor, my Google English, Translate out. <laughs> You know, you know, I I really believe uh, Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor is a, a 50-50 fight. You have, they have two common opponents. Um, one, which Katie Taylor knocked out in the third, Amanda Serrano knocked out in the second. Then you have Miriam Gutierrez, who they both recently fought mm-hmm. and both went the distance with her. The difference was, I mean, and, and Katie Taylor completely dominated Gutierrez as well as did Amanda. But the difference there was the way Gutierrez was unrecognizable after the fight. Her her face was just it was was swollen. (laughs) It was I mean, it was crazy. You know, you could definitely see that Amanda does have that power. Um, She has 30 KOs in the first round. So that's going to be, you know, interesting because Katie Taylor has extremely, you know, beautiful footwork. Uh, she has skill. She has speed. Um, and she's very smart. She's very smart with her angles, picks her punches very well, throws combinations. And then you have Amanda Serrano, you know, who's, you know, a, a little heavier on her feet, but can box and has a punch. So I think um, Katie Taylor has to be on her A game, really boxing very well, moving, you know, using her angles, not staying, you know, static, not wanting to get into a brawl with with Amanda while Amanda really, I believe, has to, you know, start pressure early on, work the body, um, keep that pressure. And and you know, t- Katie has been seen to to kind of slow down in the later rounds. And and I think that's where Amanda can have, you know, the best opportunity. But it's, it's truly a 50-50 fight. I keep going back and forth on who can win. But um, I'm just, I think we all win. We all win watching Fans, this fight. Yeah. Watching this fight is is extraordinary. It's making history at the MSG. Two women headlining. So I'm just excited. Like I I get goosebumps just thinking about it. And you get to be part of it. That's even that's even more incredible. You got two fights going for all the marbles. You got even Franchon Cruz Desern versus mm-hmm. Sidurus. So that's even incredible. Um, I just read right now that of course. <laughs> The two men with all the money made a million dollar bet on who's going to win. Of course they would. But um, with something like this, you know, when a lot of people have said that Amanda Serrano has a punch like a Mack truck, I'm very curious because Katie Taylor, she doesn't spar women. I mean, maybe she does, but I know she spars men. I have to assume that some of these men really try to hit her in the face that could be stronger than Amanda. Am I correct? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but I think both of them really spar men because uh, Amanda to. only spars only Amanda only spars women like closer to her fight. But from what I know of, um, she even contacted Jason Velez as one of her sparring partners for this fight. Oh, um, I didn't know that. So, okay. So both women spar men. I mean, both women are are ready, and it's it's going to be a great display. It's going to be a great display. So I'm I'm intrigued. I can't tell you who's going to win because I have no idea. The boxing gods have really blessed us with this one. I'm extremely excited. Oh, yeah. When when you I went back and I was looking at your box rec and I saw that your first pro fight was in 2016. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking about how much has changed in women boxing just in this period, what 6 years. So when you mm-hmm. fought your first 
your first professional fight, remembering that, looking at boxing now, what were your early goals, your early dreams? And, you know, we got this historic match and you're still part of it no matter what. You know, I was just talking about this yesterday. You know, I debuted in 2016 after uh, having failed at qualifying for the Olympics. So I did the whole Olympic cycle and then I, I won the trials and I lose at the qualifier. So that's when I decided to turn pro. And after 2016, you know, the whole the whole atmosphere for women's boxing started to really, really change in the pros because back in the day, us amateurs didn't want to turn pro because we didn't see anything in the pros. We didn't, there wasn't, it wasn't like you saw fi uh, women fighting each other at your local shows. Um, it kind of had died out since like, I saw Christy Martin fight when I was little on HBO and all that stuff, but you didn't really see it anymore. So when 2016, you know, a lot of the amateur prospects started turning pro and it, it really changed. So for me, you know, when I when I first turned pro, it was just winning a world championship. And it still is. I mean, I haven't achieved it. And I'm one of the ones that, you know, I turned pro with Michaela Mayer, Clarissa Shields, Marlene, um, all these girls. And I st I'm still not there. So I still have a, have the same goal. Just a different mindset now because, like, I was talking about this yesterday. I wish I would have enjoyed myself when I did all these things. Like, I debuted on national TV on Box Azteca. Mm. Um, I had, you know, in a in a stacked arena, or arena um, Panterita Neri was the main event oh. with Sanford. And it was it was packed. You know, as I'm walking into the ring, you know, I'm nervous. My legs are feel like jelly. Everything is going it's going by so fast. I have the great, one of the greatest in history, you know, Julio Cesar Chavez as a commentator right there, you know, watching me fight. I wish I would have enjoyed those moments a little more and not put so much pressure on myself and, you know, felt that moment, really enjoyed it, really lived it. And that's, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to win a world championship and I'm going to enjoy it. There you go. When it goes down, <laughs> we're going to send, we're going to clip this clip for you and we're going to mm -hmm. send it back to you and we like, see, look what manifestation does for you. You got to manifest. You got to put it in there, put the work, be, do the action, but also self-affirm yeah. all the time too. You don't, have be, to don't be so hard on yourself, Sulem. I mean, <laughs> you know, when I first met you at the WBC Women's Convention in the Philippines, I remember Nancy was really high on you. She was just like this girl. Like I know that I forgot I forgot that one girl that she we wanted you guys to fight. Um, oh God, you know we. I think you guys did a face off, but I remember Nancy's like she's going to be a world champion, a future world champion. She, she kept talking about you. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, she it. always talks about you. And so it's, uh, you know, to hear Absolutely. you, to see that. And that was what, 2017? I can't even remember. But to see your progression <laughs> and then now to also hear you on the mic. I love it. I really love it. <laughs> and she's one of the ladies that comes out in some very sexy lingerie Ooh. bikinis, which we appreciate. <laughs> we really do. So I think I think hey, just because I'm a boxer doesn't mean I I'm in a fight with you know, being feminine and being a woman outside of the ring. Once yeah. when I'm fighting, yeah, my gloves are laced up, no makeup. I'm ready to work. But outside the ring, I have the absolutely right to be whatever I want to be. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm a person. I'm a woman. OK, well, Sulem, there are some things that we do. Uh, we both have a segment. Mine, I just call it off the cuff. So we're just going to um, I'm going to name some names uh, on the pound for pound list, on the female pound for pound list uh, from ring. First word, only one word that comes to your mind that describes them. Ready? Don't think, just say. Okay, ready? Okay. Katie Taylor. Fast. Clarissa Shields. Savage. Amanda Serrano. Powerful. Jessica McCaskill. Strong. Delphine Pursun. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, that. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Chantel Cameron. Uh, very strong. Mikhail Mayer. Great job. Sinicia Estrada. Crafty. Cecilia Brekus. Uh, longevity. Savannah Marshall. 
Knockout power. <laughs> and then finally, eventually you'll be on it, Sula Murbina. Perseverance. Yeah. See, I like that. You I ran like through that. the game. See, you follow the instructions. We tell people one <laughs> word. They be like a whole like, sentence. <laughs> well, we would want, I think that she is a no. We want one word. You know what Just my favorite one. one was when we asked Jamie Mitchell, Michaela Mayer. She's like white chocolate. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that one. Yeah. And well, that's two words. I, I threw a little bit of the two words in there. But... It's all right if yeah. you had an adjective. Okay. You did yeah. so many good ones. We'll give you a pass yeah, on the last did, couple. But... You was zipping through it. Yeah. And sounds la- good. Thank you. And last but not least, we have our final segment of the show. We like to uh, call it Talk Yo Shit. And your oh, camera shit. is right in front of you. <laughs> and you know what? You know, Shane Mosley put us in such a positive vibe last week. Oh, that my God. Maybe you don't have shit to talk. Maybe you just want to be <laughs> sweet and wish kind wishes to people. But if you want to talk your no, shit. talk your shit, girl. Oh, wait. I think you have a phone call. I see uh, your oh, name. Tell them they got to call you back. Because you're about to talk your shit. Exactly. <laughs> so we are. Go ahead and look directly into your camera. It's going to zoom in on you. And Sulem, go ahead. Talk your shit. This is Sulem Urbina. I will be world champion. Doesn't matter who pushes me aside. I'm here. I'm strong. And I'm coming for you. So, Leonela Yudica, I hope to be fighting you this summer. Okay. She uh, called out a name. Call it out and talk it. Walk I it like that. Talk it. Very I think, well oh, done. is that the yeah, one that you're going to possibly fight in the summer that you're not allowed to tell us? <laughs> I, I hope. I hope. Okay, we gonna say we got the exclusive. Uh, yeah, right. And we got CIA agent Giander LaBeouf on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Before we like, before we let you go, there is one other fight that we have been asking about because uh, it is a true grudge match, and when that actually goes down, we want to know who you or who wins: Clarissa Shields or ver- versus Savannah Marshall. Talk to us. Ah, why are you guys putting me on this spot? Cause you know, I mean, I I've known Clarissa for since we were amateur, and, and she's somebody that's always you know supported me. And and Savannah Marshall, she's opened a lot of doors for for women, you know, in, in the sport also. So two tremendous women. Um, I think Clarissa has tremendous skill. She's very smart. She's strong. And then you have Savannah Marshall that has, you know, she really does have knockout power and that kind of awkward style at the same way that, you know, she moves her arms. You don't quite know where her punch is coming from. I don't even know what's going to happen in that fight. I just I just know that it's a car crash waiting to happen and I'm there for it. <laughs> I know that's right. I love it. Just with the shit talking already with both from both of them, and that's already the start of it all. I like that. It's good. Like- hey, let me tell you something. Every every great boxer needs a dance partner. Yeah. And I think that's what they are to each other. Yeah, they really that's are. what they are to each other. So, <sighs> so I'm there for it. I got to, you know, I got to be at that fight. Yeah, it's in. It's going to be in London. Well, I, I'm not going to say it's going to, but uh, Clarissa said if it's going to be on mutual grounds, it should be at the O2 in London. And you know what? Let's all get our passports all together. Let's all get our Ryan, Travis. Let's go. It's field trip. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it's a great one, oh. and it could be. It could. We could get like our first true modern era <gasps> trilogy rematch. Ooh. Gaddy War type of situation. Absolutely. That would be fun. Okay, since this, we're going to drop this episode. Usually we drop it the following week, but since there is a very big uh, prediction on here, we may, as, we may as well ask you about uh, Shakur versus Oscar. Steven, uh, oh, Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez. Does Valdez have a chance against Shakur, or does Shakur, will Shakur outbox him, out brawl him, out everything? No, I think Shakur is an extremely smart boxer. He and and he's he's young and he's hungry, um, but I don't think you can underestimate an Oscar Valdez. Oscar always steps up when when he has great competition. Uh, he showed that against Burchett. Nobody mm-hmm. believed mm-hmm. that he could win that fight, and he went in there and you could possibly say you know ended Burchett's career. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I'm I'm really curious to see if. If Valdez is able to to land on on Shakur, because Shakur is one of the best defensive fighters out there right now. He hardly gets hit. So if if Valdez is able to to get you know some uh, punches through, and if if Shakur is able to 
to to to take them because in all reality he hasn't been hit like that um it's it you know that's what's great about boxing not knowing what's gonna happen and um i'm just excited that it's it's a great fight it's a unification and the ring belt's on the line so it's a new king in the one 130 pound division will be really crowned with two belts how exciting. I love how you ran that. Oh, man, See, she's on. that come good on, on the mic, right? Wind it on down <laughs> and make it relevant for us. Right? That was great. <laughs> you know what, Sulem? Just I, preserve your brain and just rock the mic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. Hey, I'm 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 here for it. So um it's it's something that I definitely would love to do in the future. Absolutely. And I, I've not I haven't taken any, you know, beatings. I haven't been in wars like that. So Wow. Uh, I'll be healthy. That's great. <laughs> oh, Sulem, thank you for joining us. We we really, really appreciate your insight, your story that you have never shared. And uh, you have no idea because when people watch this, they're going to, it might resonate with them and mm-hmm. think, wow, mm-hmm. I didn't know that someone else is going through this or I did not know Sulem has gone through this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people are forgiving and they'll, they'll look at you a little differently and be like, you know what? Okay. She she's just like any other person that has a, a spat with their husband, but it just happens to be that they work with them in the ring. <laughs> and, but yeah, so and, we, and it's all about how you pick yourself up yeah, after the adversity absolutely. because, like you're you're uh, over there at Golden Boy, Bernard Hopkins lost his first fight. Yeah, yeah. And look what happened exactly. to him. Yeah. Look at Gabe Rosado. Exactly. There's always uh, look at Manny Pacquiao. Look at Canelo. Look <laughs> so, at, exactly. Yeah. You so. know the losses don't define you. It's how you pick yourself up. And, That's right. And keep moving forward. Just, That's right. Just always keep believing in yourself because we know what you do. You know you have a good heart. You have, you're a smart girl, and uh, we know that you can fight. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm here. I'm here to stay. And um, there's going to be. Uh, a difference with Amurina next time I step into the ring. Ah. I know that's right. Woo! Soon <laughs> and the new, very soon. All right. Absolutely. All right, Sulem, thank you. And uh, I can't wait to see if you're, well, you didn't really give us a full prediction. It's a 50 50 fight, which everyone has given us. So, yes. uh, like you said, the fans win. So, um, we're going to have to bring you back on the show and tell us exactly what you saw uh, in this and what you said in Spanish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Más que dispuesta. Orale! <laughs> oh, thanks, Sulem. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I have no clue what you said. Oh, we just froze. First thing. <laughs> Thank you again. All right. Thanks, Sulem. Oh, my God. She was so great. That was cool. I'm glad she opened up and mental health, mental health. And this people. is why, you know, it's when we speak with these people, not just women, but even Nonito, like they, they open up about things that they don't share with others. And it really does uh, if, uh, affect their mental health and what she does. And I mean, I didn't know she was going to go that personal, but you know, a bravo to her and for anyone else that is going through the same thing, you know, you're not alone. So just um, seek some help, talk about it and um, it will be all right. Yeah. Ask, ask those questions. Have those conversations. If you need an intermediary, find a, a trusted person to sit in with you and don't be afraid to let one portion go to save the other. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So good. It was really good. And listening to her on the mic, mm-hmm. just uh, giving her prediction. And she's just as excited about the uh, Katie versus Amanda and how she broke that all down for us. And I mean, she, of course it's a 50, 50 fight. It's exciting. <laughs> and, stuff. Also, and yeah. And even for Oscar and uh, Shakur. So uh, this will be good, but that's a great one for us today. Yay. Thank you again, Sulem. Yeah. Enjoy talking to you and getting to know you. I've never had the pleasure of she's interviewing great. her before. She's great. She's a little firecracker. I love it. And uh, she's one of those girls. I love it when, uh, like I said, during the weigh-in, she like these little itty bitty t- like itty, a, bitty, itty bitty, bitty bikinis, weenie. but she rocks them and um, she performs. That's right. Represent. Do you, women. Do you. Wear whatever you want. Else, yeah. Own your own body. All right. So this is another edition, but let me. So now that our fabulous producer, Ryan, gave us the actual notes ding, 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 of ding. where to follow us on Twitter at Best Women's BSP, Instagram at Best Women's Boxing Show, and at, we have a TikTok that's going on. It's it's on fire right now. Uh, Best Women's Boxing Show. So you get to see some of our reactions. Uh, we talked about the illegal push or the, the Island Boys 
just don't get into boxing. But yeah, they're they're. I guess that's what's called boxing. And some of our uh, guests that have been on the show for their. Um, moments certain moments so uh thank you guys for tuning in jay this is a fun one this was a fun every one. episode's and fun with you it's a fun day every day i want to start a thing on tiktok we gotta start the campaign of, of jay's incredibly shrinking face because <laughs> i was looking at those early tiktoks and the ones we just filmed i was like damn i'm looking pretty good you know your girl been working out a little bit so she been looking good trying, she's to, on the she's on the shrinking you're you looking I'm good to, i'm trying to the you know the 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 pen Pandulce got us all. So we all got to, <laughs> you know, shave it off after the Pandulce. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Go to all of our socials that I just mentioned. And uh, we'll be dropping this episode today because <laughs> exactly. there's some predictions. All right. I am Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. Thanks for tuning in to the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. See you guys at the fight. Bye, guys. Bye.